Do you love farmhouse decor? I've got a few Dollar Tree projects today that I think you'll enjoy, and they turned out even better than I imagined. For our first project, we're using this gorgeous Farm Life wooden sign I found at Dollar Tree. We're going to go ahead and remove the hanger, and I am going to use a white chalk paint, very carefully painting all of the backboard as well as the edges around the frame and the edging of all the letters. It would probably be easier to take this outside and spray paint it so that you can get all of those nooks and crannies, but it was pretty windy that day. So I just used a detailed brush, took my time, painted the entire back part of the sign, as well as all of the edging on the raised portions of this sign. Then once you let that dry, we're gonna go ahead and fill in those holes with some wood filler and let that set up. Then I'm gonna take a fine grit sandpaper and go over all of those raised wood letters just to make sure that none of the paint clumped up around that because I want it to be nice and smooth. And we'll go ahead and sand down the wood filler. Once you wipe all of that down, I'm gonna take a Dollar Tree sponge brush and this one has been very well loved. You can see all the discoloration on it. We're gonna dab that into some black paint wipe most of it off you just want the end of the brush to have the black paint and then you're very gently just going to drag it across the raised portions of the sign you're not pressing you're not pushing you're just very gently gliding it over top we're going to do that for all the raised portions including the frame and the outside of the frame We're using a Dollar Tree bicycle wreath form and we are going to set the sign right in the center. We'll flip that over and you're going to use four pieces of floral wire. You want to have two on each side as well as some ribbon. I'm going to cut four of those pieces. I'm going to take the floral wire, bend it in half and then slide it underneath the wire parts that we want to be able to attach our sign to the wreath form. Then gently lift that up, hot glue the floral wire in place, take your ribbon and place it over top of that, and then pull your floral wire up so that when the glue sets, they will be standing straight up on the back of the sign. You'll do that for all four pieces, then we'll set our wreath form back on top of this, twist the floral wire around your wreath form nice and tight then go back and you can cut those excess floral wire pieces off and then i like to take a pair of pliers make sure that i twist it even tighter and tuck it down beside the wire form i'm going to cut four more pieces of ribbon to not only reinforce this, but it's also going to keep that floral wire from scratching the surface when I hang this up. Now you can leave it just like this, but I want to create some greenery and a bow to go at the top of this. So I'm using some greenery with white flowers. I believe those came from Hobby Lobby, as well as some boxwood greenery from Walmart. And I'm going to overlap three pieces on each side over top of some twine, and then I'll tie that in the center double knotting it and then I'm going to wrap it around a few times on each side to make sure that the stems that overlapped in the middle are covered and that they're not going to come out then we'll double knot that again to make sure everything stays in place and we'll set it to the side we're going to make a bow I'm using some two and a half inch wired burlap ribbon I think that came from Walmart I have some dark burlap it's not wired and then I have some buffalo check which is wired I did not measure I just cut out two lengths of the lighter burlap and then I'll cut the darker burlap just a little bit shorter than that and because it's so wide I'm going to cut that in half so I'll now have two strips of that and then I'll cut the buffalo check about the same length as I did for the dark burlap. 
I'm going to take one end of my buffalo check and fold that in half and cut it at an angle so I can dovetail those. And I'll do that for an end for each of the bows. So one end's not gonna have a dovetail, but the other end will. Then I'll take a piece of twine. We're gonna take that wired burlap and fold it over to create a loop at the top. Pinch those together in the middle and then we'll put those on top of each other. We'll take one of the dark burlap and do the exact same thing, creating a loop, pinch it together, hold it with the other two pieces. And then for the remaining three, I'm just going to pinch it in the middle, not creating a loop. And I'll crisscross that on top of those two and then take that last piece and do that on the back side. Then we'll take our twine, we're gonna wrap it around the center of all of those ribbons and double knot it in the back, but make sure you leave your excess twine on there. We'll need that to attach everything together. You don't need the excess twine on the greenery. You can go ahead and cut that off, but we'll double knot that around the greenery and still leave that excess twine so we can attach it to our wreath form. So we're just going to place it right at the center at the top of our wreath form, flip that over, and I think I triple knotted that. And then I took the excess twine after I had triple knotted it. We're gonna pull that down to the end and tie a knot and trim the excess off so you can have a hanger to hang this up with. Now, because I decided to make the bow the way I did, I went back and the three pieces that I did not put loops in, I went ahead and dovetailed the ends of those fluff your bow out and this is how it turned out and I think it's gorgeous but I would love to know what you guys think. For this project, I'm using this Farm Sweet Farm sign that I found at Dollar General. I believe it was a dollar or two dollars. To fill in the holes in the front, I'm going to place a piece of scotch tape on the back side so that when I fill these in with caulk, it doesn't seep through the back. You could use a wood filler, but I thought by using white caulk, I wouldn't have to paint it because it matched pretty well. The holes are pretty deep, so I do have to push that in there and add a little bit more caulk. Then you can take a wet paper towel or a baby wipe and just gently go over that to blend it in. We're also using this palette sign. This came from Family Dollar and they're usually about two or three dollars. My Family Dollar closest to my house is actually closing, so they had a 75% off sale, so I was able to get that for 25 cent. This project was so easy. The longest part is actually just waiting for the caulk to dry. Dollar Tree has a variety of different signs like this. This is so adorable. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. That is the cutest little saying. Once we remove that hanger, I'm going to do just like I did with the other sign, painting around all of the edges as well as the back. I'm also going to paint the chicken and the pig white this time. Give that time to dry and we're going to use a Dollar Tree sponge brush. This time I'm using a celery colored paint and gently going over all of the wording as well as those greenery pieces that are kind of coming up from the pig. But we're not going to go over the pig or the chicken because I have something else I want to cover those with. And that is this gorgeous floral napkin that I found at Hobby Lobby. Remove the back layer. This napkin really reminds me of like Pioneer Woman. So I'm going to hold that over the sign and cut out enough to cover up the pig, not the chicken yet because I wanna use a different design for that. Then we're gonna take some water a clean brush, dab it into the water, and then spread water all over 
the raised portion of that pig. So you don't want it completely saturated, but you want to have enough water on there so that when you place your napkin, those areas get wet. So just press your napkin over top of it and then very gently take that paintbrush with the water on it and go over it again and it's going to bring out the outline of that pig so you'll do that over the entire portion of the pig then you're going to take a weeding tool and they sell something very similar like this at dollar tree and go around the edging of the pig and kind of separate the napkin from where it's wet and where it's dry you're going to have a little bit of extra on the outline but that's okay we're going to clean that up later once you've gone around it one time take your excess napkin and very gently pull it up and if there are pieces that haven't separated yet kind of separate those and then remove your excess but leave that napkin on the pig. You're gonna do the exact same thing for the chicken. Now, I decided I wanted to have a different flour on mine, so I'm gonna cut that out a little bit larger than the chicken. We're gonna use the exact same method that we did with the pig by applying the water, the napkin, adding some water on top, then separating it, peeling your excess away, but leave those napkin pieces on the pig and the chicken and let those dry. Once that napkin is dry, you can take Mod Podge, gently peel up one half of it, apply your Mod Podge to one half of the pig, and then go over it with a layer of Mod Podge. For those extra little pieces that are kind of sticking out on the outline, push those down around the outline itself, and it's going to clean those edges up. We're going to do that for the other half of the pig and do the exact same thing for the chicken. When we got the napkin wet, if you notice a little bit of the ink kind of get on the background of your sign, just touch that up with some white paint and let it dry. For the frame itself, you could paint it whatever color you like. I chose to go with a brown oxide and I'm going to apply that to the frame as well as the outside edges using that sponge brush. Once that dries, you can then reattach the hanger that came with it or add a new hanger. I'm just going to double knot mine on the back and look how adorable this turned out. I would love to know what you guys think of this project. For this project you'll need a Dollar Tree pizza pan. We're going to lightly go over that with a fine grit sandpaper to scuff it up to make sure that our paint and glue adheres well. Then we'll wipe that down with a dry paper towel. We'll flip that over to the back side and using a piece of scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. We're going to flip that over with the pattern down. Take a pencil and just go around the outline of the bottom of the pan. It does not have to be perfect. When you cut it out, cut it out larger than your outline. Then you can place that on the inside of your pan and using your fingernail, go around and make a crease. Once you have your crease made all the way around, take a box cutter or a utility knife and carefully go through and cut where you made those creases. This is going to get you very close all the way to the edge. Once you have that excess removed, set your scrapbook paper to the side. We're going to go ahead and paint the rim and a little bit on the inside of the rim with some chalk paint. I did not have an off-white color, so I'm using the color French Linen. Once that dries, I'm gonna take some antique wax and apply that to all of the painted areas. While the antique wax is still wet, I'm gonna take a wet wipe and gently go over it to blend it in 
and remove the excess. I want mine to have a little bit more of an aged look. I let the antique wax set up and then I'm gonna come back with a white chalk paint and just dry brush over it. It's gonna lighten it up a little bit, but it's gonna show some of that dark wood color undertones underneath. Let that dry, then you can take some Mod Podge and apply that to the center inside of your pan. Spread that out evenly, making sure you go all the way to the edges so that you'll be able to put your scrapbook paper down and press it firmly all the way around so it'll have a nice seal. Now I'm going to take some of Dollar Tree's nautical rope and hot glue this in small sections at a time right there between the scrapbook paper and the rim of the pizza pan. The key to this is to do it in small sections. That way your hot glue has time enough to set up before you go to the next section. When I get to the end, I always like to take the hot glue and put it on the inside of the nautical rope and kind of twist it around to keep those pieces from coming apart. Unfortunately, my camera battery died and I didn't realize it, so I'm missing a little bit of footage, but this is a metal pig sign from Dollar Tree, and I've already removed the hanger, and then I've taken six tumbling tower pieces, and using E6000 and hot glue, I glued two of them together to make three sets of two, so that we'll be able to use E6000 and hot glue to attach these to the back of the pig, since it's a bit concaved. This will create a raised portion, so we'll be able to attach this to the center of our pizza pan again using E6000 and hot glue. Hot glue alone on those tumbling tower pieces to the back of the pig will not stay, it will pop off. Then we can use that combination of glue to attach this to the center of our pizza pan. Look how precious this pig is. Dollar Tree had a pink one and then they had this white one with beautiful gold coloring on it. Now, I forgot to fill in the holes, so I do recommend you kind of do that first before you put it on the pizza pan, but I am gonna go ahead and use some of that white caulk to fill that in and then blend it out with a baby wipe. I'm going to be making a bow for mine, so I'm using two pieces of wired burlap ribbon as well as some plaid ribbon. This came from Dollar Tree's Plus section. I'm going to dovetail both ends of the burlap ribbon, and then I'll grab a piece of twine so that I'll be able to tie all of this together. I'm going to pinch those burlap pieces right in the center. And then I'll set that to the side just for a second. It's going to kind of hold its shape. Then I'll take that plaid ribbon and just fold it over in thirds. And then I can pinch that together in the middle. Place this on top of my two burlap pieces. And then use that twine to tie it all together and double knot it in the back. Once I remove all that excess twine, I am going to go ahead and also use another piece of that plaid ribbon and hot glue it in thirds to be able to cover the center of the bow. It's gonna give it a nice finished look to it. So just place your glue, fold it over one third, and then do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Then you can place that right in the center and hot glue it down in the back. I'm also going to use that last little piece of plaid ribbon that I had left over on my roll to dovetail both ends and I'm going to use this as a base to attach to the top of my pizza pan. So I need for it to hold its shape in the center so I'm just going to tie that together and you're probably wondering well why didn't I put that on the bottom of the other bow. Well, I want to glue this down first because I want to be able to attach some greenery to the top and I know if I just hot glue the greenery to the pizza pan it's just going to pop right back off because it really does my greenery didn't have a lot of texture on the stem so if I place the bow down and then I add my greenery on top of that the hot glue is going to help that greenery adhere to the fabric better and I'll do that in the center and then off to the side a little bit too so it'll hold its shape then I can add the bow right in the center at the top 
once my glue kind of cools off, I could flip this over and create a hanger on the back using some Dollar Tree nautical rope and also a couple pieces of ribbon. So I can glue that to kind of conform around the shape of the rim of the pan and use that ribbon to reinforce it and seal it in. Just make sure you kind of push your ribbon all around the nautical rope and put a really good amount of glue to hold it in place. I hope you enjoyed today's projects and if you have a favorite let me know in the comment section down below I always love to know which one is your favorite and if you haven't subscribed already I would love for you to click that subscribe button right below this video thank you so much for spending time with me today please take care and I will see you guys next time